On our morning show from WRCO and WRCE, we're here with Heather Tomei, the Richland Hospital Registered Nurse and Stroke Program Coordinator. Uh, You've been here before talking about uh, the subject, and you have some events coming up in the area that people should take note of, don't you? I do. I'm happy to be back. We're going to talk about another stroke event we have coming up in a couple weeks at the Richland Hospital. Um, I was here back in the spring to talk about our first one, and having another one um, on October 4th. So I'm hoping the people who weren't able to come in the spring can maybe get a spot at this one. I'm excited to do it again. So how can they register for that? Yeah, so um, on Wednesday, October 4th is the next event. Um, If people would like to attend, they can call Sarah Stibby. Um, She's an administrative assistant over at the hospital. They can call her directly, uh, 608-647-647. 1883. Leave a voicemail with your name and phone number. It is limited to the first 25 people that call. So that's kind of important that you get on that right away. Uh, we have giddy bags for everyone that comes, and it's going to be really informative and engaging. The last group really enjoyed it. They asked a lot of great questions, and everyone was very. Um, excited actually when they left. So that was kind of nice. Why do you feel this is important, Heather? You know, stroke is kind of a taboo topic for people. They don't really like to talk about strokes. No one, no one likes talking about bad things that could happen to them. Um, I like to present it in a way that is easy to understand and makes it feel comfortable. So you don't feel as though any question is dumb because no question is dumb. And I think that if we can reduce some of your risk factors for that and people can be made aware of those, we can reduce our risk of stroke. And it's a horrible thing to have happen to you. So learning about it and having education, education is power, is so important. Aren't the risk factors similar to to other uh, things such as heart disease? Yeah, the risk factors are kind of your risk factors for any chronic health condition. Um, There's quite a few of them. We go over all of them in the class, but um, a few of them are pretty easy to modify. Some of them you have no control over, but the ones that can be modified, talk through how you can do that um, when you attend and give some helpful tips and tricks. A few of them, we give you some things in the goodie bag to help with, including like a blood pressure cuff because hypertension is the number one cause of a stroke both types of stroke, both hemorrhagic and ischemic. So if you can control your blood pressure, you can reduce your risk of stroke. So knowing that and knowing how to affect that is a huge piece in controlling your risk. Um, Other factors, certainly hereditary. Um, If you've got a history in your family, this is probably something that maybe you should be steered toward as well, isn't it? Yeah. So there's some studies out there that talk about how if you have a family member who's had a stroke, it could just be your genetics. They're doing some risk. They're doing some studies on looking at genes, kind of like you know how they've done some studies about breast cancer, and some women just carry the gene, or some family members just carry this gene for breast cancer. There are some studies that show people have a gene potentially for heart disease. There's also you know genetics in how you live your life. You know some families just aren't active. They don't like to do active things. And that's just how you've been raised and how your parents lived and how your grandparents lived and now how your kids live. So there's some genetics to that. Um, Also, perhaps how you cook food. You know, maybe you don't know how to do vegetables and how to do fruits and you eat big old ten, you know, T-bones every night (laughs) and don't know what that means and how to adjust that because that's what you grew up with. So there's genetics and there's also lifestyle and your environment so it kind of all plays into it but yeah there is you know the genetics of if you have a family member who has heart disease you're at risk for having heart disease stroke and they all play together have you seen any research or data that shows how richland county ranks in terms of the state and and the high risk of of stroke are we a little higher in this area um so i have looked that up and i have it in my slides at the um, event, and I ha- can't remember them off the top of my head, but it's, um, I can't remember where we are exactly in the state, but I do know 
one thing that I learned while doing my research for my stroke event was um, there's some research out there that talks about just rural health in general and how living in a rural area is great in some ways. You know, you have opportunity to go walking in the woods and, you know, stuff like that. But in some ways, it puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage. For example, there was a study that was done in Texas, and they compared two towns. And one of them was a little more rural, and it had a lot of fast food options. And I kind of shared this with the, when I was here this spring. It just has stuck in my brain so much. And had a lot of fast food options in their town. And another one was very similar in size, but it had no fast food options. And it kind of was like, oh, wow, fast food options. That's literally driving through Highway 14 as you go through town here. And they found that your risk of stroke, the more fast food options that you had in your town, went higher. And if you think about it, it's like, well, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. Because as you drive by, you're like, well, I'll just swing through there, get myself some fries and a McChicken and go about my way. Versus if you drive on your main road and you don't have those choices, you're kind of almost forced to go home, cook yourself a meal, and then you're not using all those extra saturated fats and such like that, stuff like that. So in hindsight, it makes sense, but it's also very interesting. It's convenient, but it's also unfortunate. So when I saw that, I thought exactly of the, about this town. You know, we have so many options for convenience but it's kind of putting us almost at a disadvantage. So learning how to then adjust how we live our lives to kind of counteract that, you know, taking advantage of the the route, the walking trails and the biking trails and all the things that are available to us. It's kind of important. Living a little bit further away from the hospital too. I have to wonder about about that because you always talk about stroke and how you should act fast. That probably puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage. You know, people can't get to you very fast too, right? Right. So, you know, stroke is a very time sensitive process. Um, It's very important as soon as someone recognizes the signs of a stroke to seek 911 or seek your local hospital. So a lot of times what I've noticed, um, so I look at every patient's chart that comes into the hospital with a stroke, stroke stroke-like symptoms, diagnosed or not diagnosed with the stroke, and look through what time did their symptoms start, what time did they show up, how fast did we do everything, and I enter everything into a database, and we're compared nationally to every facility that does this. Um, And then we eventually learn whether or not we receive awards and so forth. Um, We do really, really well, but we do really, really well because people have to get to us quickly. Um, so a lot of things though that I find, which makes me kind of laugh, and there's some trends that I've noticed is sometimes people want to take a nap and they're like, oh, I don't, I have this headache and it's the worst headache I've ever had in my life, but a nap will fix it. And you're like, if it's the worst headache you've ever had in your life, nap probably is not going to fix it. Or ah, I couldn't use my hand anymore. And I thought, maybe if I just shake it off and go about my day, I'll just use my other hand. Have you ever been able to use your other hand in your entire life? Probably not. But now all of a sudden you're going to become left-handed. That's interesting, (laughs) you know, and it kind of speaks to that, you know, can do rural attitude, but it kind of then backfires. You know, it's so time sensitive. There's stuff we can do if you get to the hospital faster. So um, yeah, it is very time sensitive and living close helps, but also, you know, even if the ambulance takes 25 or 30 minutes to get to you, that's better than 24 hours when you realized, oh, it didn't go away. So it might take a little bit, but it's better than ignoring it, which is what sometimes us rural folk tend to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But but also, you know, I think about myself too. Sometimes, you know, you have an ache and pain. Oh, what was that? You know, and, mm-hmm. you know, you can sometimes be a hypochondriac thinking, okay, you know, I, no, it was just a false alarm. Uh, it's easy to do, I think. It is. Yep. And I've always told patients, so I have spent most of my career in the emergency room as a nurse, um, spent a little bit of time also on our medical surgical unit at Thurston Hospital. But most of it has been spent in the ER, and everyone's like, it's probably nothing. It's probably nothing when they show up. Like, oh, I've had this twinge in my heart, or, yeah, my hand feels like it's asleep, and I I don't know. I don't know. It's probably nothing. And I said, I would rather you come in and me tell you nothing, and I discharge you home to your loved ones, and all is good, and you go about and live your life, 
versus the other thing, which is not great. Like you have this horrible disability or even death, and now we're talking a whole different game. I love discharging people home. That's like the easiest thing I do every day. <laughs> um, and you might think you're being a burden or, you know, interfering with the, a true emergency, but it's a true emergency to you and that's all that matters. So I think when people kind of think about that, that's truly what we're there for. We're there to make sure you're not going to die. And that's our job. So right. that's what we're there for. I, I went in once thinking, you know, well, something's going on here. And it was an inner ear, like ear yeah. infection. But I was thinking the worst at that time, like maybe this is a stroke. And, you know, other yeah. things can be similar. Can't it can they? be. And it's how you don't have a CT scanner in your backyard. No, do you? Nope. no, I don't think so. Not, I mean, if you did, <laughs> you could be. Could make some money on you the side. You could, <laughs> yes. Can you imagine? Wow. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's how you figure it out, right? Like, you don't have the skills or the tools to do it on your own. That's why, you know, physicians go to med school and why we go through nursing school and get all the tests and all the certifications and continuing education because that's what we do. Um, Just like I don't try to figure out what's wrong with my husband's truck today. (laughs) Um, I take it to Jones's and they tell me what's wrong with it, right? right? Like. I'm not going to tell them what I, I did tell them what I thought was wrong. I was right, but that's besides the point. (laughs) Um, But, you know, like that's kind of why people do what they do. They have, you have experts in their fields and you have to trust that they know what they're doing. So who should sign up for this event on October 4th? Who are good candidates? I think everybody. Um, You know, anyone can have a stroke. It doesn't matter if you're young or old. There's research that shows, you know, babies can have strokes, right? Um, obviously, a baby can't learn their risk factors, so don't take a speed spot if you're a baby. But, you know, anyone can learn something from this class. Um, so I would say if you have any curiosity, sign up. Um, I can always hold more in the future. If we fill all of our spots, that just proves that, I need to have some more next year, right? So if you're listening and you're thinking, hmm, I wonder if I have any risk factors, you need to call Sarah, sign up, and come learn and eat some food, get some free stuff, and just see what there is to learn about. Is this the last one of the year? It is the last one of the year. um, And then I have to kind of reevaluate where we are with some funding. So these were all funded We received some grant money back in like, I think like 2019. I don't even know how long ago we received this money because then COVID happened and then I couldn't have events and all sorts of things. Um, And then we couldn't spend the money. So now we've been spending the money. We did the event in the spring. We used a nice chunk of the grant money to send blood pressure cuffs home with people through their primary care providers um, and through the ER and our inpatient units and then doing this other event. Um, and I really wanted these events to have, you know, some food and really make it kind of informal and open and laid back. So that was really my focus and kind of reevaluate where we're at. And hopefully next year I can have some more. Uh, what about stroke numbers? Have you seen anything since 2020 like COVID? Are the strokes up? Kind of, yeah. So they have... There has been some research. We knew when COVID was happening that COVID can cause blood clots. We knew that. So we saw some interesting things when COVID was happening with clots in general. So, yeah, we have seen people when they had COVID that had strokes. They had blood clots in their legs. Um, They had blood clots in different areas. They had strokes, like I said, when they had COVID. So, yeah, strokes are kind of staying steady and a little bit higher than where they have been. We also have been a lot, I think, more tuned in to those subtle strokes that perhaps even six years ago we couldn't catch, but we have all in the emergency room, our providers and our nurses have done so much continuing ed in the last six years to kind of pick up on those subtle signs um, and really trying to educate the community on the importance of coming in and you're not a bother um, to really kind of come in before you think it's a big deal. So I think, 
we've noticed an increase. I think it's a combination of education for the staff and for the community, as well as perhaps some of that COVID lingering clotting factor maybe hanging out there. But yeah, I think kind of the combination of the two, but maybe more um, just education is a bigger factor. Different times, uh, types of strokes. Heather, um, aphasia, is that the... Is that how you say that? Yeah, that's Aphasia. where you have a hard time speaking. Yeah. Right, right. I've heard of that. Yeah. It seems like more common lately, too. Yeah, so there's, um, we can kind of talk about if you were to see a stroke, how you would know. Um, so that's a big part of recognizing it in yourself or in others. We at the original hospital use the acronym BFAST. Um, some people might just be familiar with the term FAST, but that doesn't talk about the strokes that affect the back part of your brain. So the BE is the back part of your brain. So there's balance. So strokes can affect affect your balance. You can see, there's a lady that I went to an education thing about. She talks about one of her friends who was out for a walk. And all of a sudden her husband said, she started walking in a circle. She wasn't able to ambulate in any other direction but to her left. So there was a small clot in the back part of her brain and it was affecting her balance and the, her ability to turn right. So wow. that was her balance. Um, another man that I heard speak at a conference once said he felt like he was like a drunken sailor. He like was on the ground at his house and he couldn't get up. And he just like every time he stood up, he felt like he was just on a ship and he had drank like four bottles of rum and couldn't get up. And he's like, I've had vertigo before, but this was something next level. So that's the B balance. There's E for eyes. So strokes can affect your vision. And I've had a, actually I've had a patient come in with this. And he goes, I think I heard some young lady on the radio talking about this. And I said, well, sir, that was me. Um, <laughs> um, and you lose part of your visual field. And he said, this is the craziest thing, but I can't see anything out of the left side of either of my eyes. And I said, I think you're having a stroke. And he goes, I know I'm having a stroke because you said so on the radio. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah. So um, you can lose like the left side of your vision or the right side of your vision or the top part of your vision or the bottom part of your vision. But it's very, very obvious. He said, he's like, it was very weird. I went to turn the TV on and I went, huh, I can't see that correctly. So those are some that are kind of important, but people tend to make say this thing like, oh, maybe I have a weird floater. That's not a weird floater. It's probably a clot that's messing with your blood flow. The F stands for your face. So that's kind of the ones that people are a little more common with, like your facial drooping. You see people with their lips start to hang or the eye a little hang, usually just one side. The A is arms or sometimes legs. So you have the arm that won't move or the leg that won't move. Sometimes it's your hand, um, the people who can't hold a pen. Um, And then you have S, which is the speech like you were referring to, the aphasia. So some people can't speak, and sometimes it's like garbled speech, or you're like, I have no idea what you're trying to say. Other times it's they can understand you, but they can't speak, and you can tell they're so frustrated, and they just want to get the words out. So that is, so there's expressive aphasia, and then where they can't talk, and then there's receptive aphasia, where they don't understand what you're saying. So you're asking them to follow a command like lift this cup and they'll turn to the left. So they're not comprehending anything you're saying, but they can still talk to you. And you're like, yeah, that's not what we were just talking about. Or they'll talk and it'll be like, what is this? And they'll say, and you're like, yeah, that's not, those aren't words. Um, And then T is terrible headache. So this is um, that terrible headache, the worst headache of your life. People have called, described it as like a thunderclap headache. And it also stands for like time to call 911. You know, some people are like, well, it's just faster for me to throw my loved one in the car and drive. That's fine. But then you show up to the ER and we're not prepared. Right. Um, so I'm never going to yell at someone for driving their loved one in. I understand it is what it is. At least you're here. But if you come in by ambulance, we have some preparation time. We can make sure the CT scanner is clear. We can have a room ready. We know that you're coming. 
they sometimes will call us on their cell phone. So we have your name, your birthday. We have all that stuff ready to go. Um, versus if you just show up, now we're lifting you out of the car and it takes a little more manpower where I already have manpower in the ambulance. So it, I'm never going to be upset if someone just shows up because I'm glad that they're there versus waiting. Um, something is better than nothing is what I've always said. So that be fast acronym is very important for people to kind of keep in the back of their head, be fast for the symptoms and be fast when you show up and when you decide to come in. So kind of just remembering all that stuff. Good, good things to know. Yeah. Uh, when is uh, National Stroke Awareness Month? It's in May. So we passed it. You were here, yep. I think, about yep. that time, yep. weren't you? And I think there is um, World Stroke Day is at the end of October. It usually falls right around Halloween. It's either like the 29th, 30th, or 31st. It's right around then um, where they just do a little bit of awareness right at the end of October. But that's also a big day to kind of keep in mind. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. Anything else yeah. you'd like to add today, Heather? Um, I would let everyone know that, you know, I, when I was here in the spring, I had said it looked like we were winning an award for our stroke work. And shortly after that, I got, um, notification from the American Heart Association that we did win an award, but it was better than what I thought we were going to win. So for the work that we did in 2022, we actually won gold plus honor roll elite. So I thought we had only won gold plus, but the honor roll elite is something that I wasn't aware that we won. So this means that for um, over two years, we had over 85% compliance for, there's seven different criteria that we have to meet. And so for every seven, for each of the seven pieces, we had over 85% compliance. And then the honor roll elite means that for every patient that qualified for clot busting medication in our ER, 85% of those got it in less than 60 minutes. So that is a huge kudos to our radiology staff, our ER providers, our ER nurses, the ER techs, really everybody, because that's a huge feat to get that. Um, Chaz Burnley, our CNO, said he was looking through everyone who won the awards, and he's like, there's maybe a handful of small hospitals in the entire state of Wisconsin that won any award, let alone this large of one. So, you know... Sometimes I think people are a little bit skittish to get, you know, this level of care at a local hospital, but really it just goes to show that we do really great work at the Richland Hospital and people should come there and be rest assured that you're getting good, good care. Congratulations on yeah, that Yeah, thank honor. you. That's I was really, really nice. kind of yeah overwhelmed when wow. I saw that. I went, whoo, I thought I was just getting a little award, but look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well deserved. Yes, but I would go you. along too with the staff is that uh, very caring. You know, it's a yes. kind of a family staff atmosphere, I think, and that helps too. I think it, it does. Yeah. Everyone really works together. And I think that shows when you win these awards. And we don't get special treatment because we're small. We right. get held to the same standards that, you know, every facility across the United States get held to. These are awards given by the American Heart Association. So it's hospitals in Boston it's hospitals in California it's everywhere and we're winning the same awards that they are and being held to the same standards there's nothing really much higher than this than we can win so you know that really speaks to the volume of care and the quality of care that we give and I'm very proud to say that I'm a part of that team so you know come learn how to not get care from us (laughs) by attending (laughs) the event that's a good way to put it (laughs) yeah so um yeah, and but if you do have to get care, I'm happy to say that it's award-winning care and that I'm a part of that. I'm very proud of it. Good deal. Well, we hope yeah. people will sign up for the, the uh, event coming up on Wednesday, October 4th. They need to call Sarah Stibby, don't they? They do, yep, and I'll give that number one more time. It's 608-647-1883. And make sure you leave your name and phone number so that way she can call you back and verify she has you on the list. Um, limited to 25 people. Um and it, the room just fits 25 people because it was a tight fit last time, but it works. Um, there will be food. And I will let you know, um, last time it was very interesting. I had Pearl Field cater last time, having them cater again this time. They made these mushrooms that somehow tasted like bacon. It was very hmm. intriguing, but amazing. So I'm curious to see what they bring this time. Um, you'll get a nice goodie bag that'll have all sorts of fun stuff in there. 
and you get to learn from me, which will be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. And um, hopefully relaxed and you learn something. So hoping we get 25 people to sign up. I, th- I hope so. Thanks for coming by and seeing us. Yes, thanks for having me. Heather Tomei, a registered nurse from the Richland Hospital and a stroke program coordinator on today's morning show.